Hey, this is John Tuttle. Uh, I've got a bucket full of stuff like this, a Buffalo River, real thick little pieces. And I did a YouTube video. I'm working them down real fast with preforms and got a lot of good comments about it. And uh, some people say they'd like to see more. So I'm gonna take this one right here and work it down for you. This piece of Buffalo River got a bullseye in it. And, and what I do is I work these down, get all the cortex off of them, and thin them down a good bit, and then I sell them. Especially new beginners are learning how to flint nap it. It helps them learn how to pressure flake and, and do a little percussion work to thin them up a little more. And, uh, I have to do them fast to, to make money off of it. And I like using this solid bopper right here when I'm trying to move thick mass because using the uh, hollow copper bopper I'm talking about, it works better to me, but that little hollow piece of uh, copper on there wears down real quick. And you gotta change them out. And, and uh, this, this thing is heavy enough, enough mass that it don't wear down that quick. And uh, when I get it to a, a stage where it's not going to be so much wear and tear on this one, like now, I'm going to stop and go to the small one. Because I'm not having to hit it as hard and it's not putting as much uh, damage into the face of it. When I say damage to the face of it, uh, this is what I'm talking about. You start putting a crease around there. And once you get that crease in there, you need to change it out. Put another one on there. Okay, that was nice and thin. Ready for the pre-fall. Alright, here's the next one. Uh I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use water this this size on it because this stuff is heated to perfection, I'm telling you. This is some of us is, is uh not that good of a great buffalo, but it's like glass now because I was able I heat treated it twice and I and after it's 40 years of working buffalo, I kind of know how to run it way, way up high. It takes a couple of steps, and it'll make the, a lot of the grainier stuff, and that's the real bad stuff it won't, but a lot of the grainier stuff will flick it up, and it works just as good as the regular stuff once you got it temperature right and heat treated. Missed my aim on that when I was looking down there. It swinging at the same time, and my eye was glancing down there where this thing fell. It caused my, my impact port to be off to the left. Okay, that one's good enough. Reach in and grab us another one. Here's probably some of the, the worst I had in there. The grainy stuff. This was almost like sand. And it still is out here on the edge where the cortex was at. Because I get more into the center. Oh my gosh. Got a big crack running through there. I think it was split in half. I'm going to go ahead and hit it there and see if it does or not. You know, that might not go all the way. Come across this way and see if we can take it out real quick. And 
get that out of there. Make sure it's not going to fill the baking point out of it. It's going to be ready to go. Boy, look at how good that works. It's out of there. You haven't got lucky on that one. Sometimes you win a few, sometimes you don't. Here's some of my favorite material. It comes out of Tennessee, and it's in layers. Sort of like, a, I'm going to tilt my phone a little bit this way. It's in layers, and you see where, and it's white. And uh, it come out of a road cut many, many, many years ago. And the reason I still got it because it would be about this thick and you'd hit it and end up with 10 layers like this. And then the layers would have cracks in it. And uh, what I've learned is you just go have probably 80% waste in it. But when you find a piece like this, and it still might have a crack that's not showing up right now, it'll turn a sort of a uh, off light orange color and it chips so good that it takes a high temperature. You gotta run this up about 700 degrees or even a little higher. Look how pretty that orange is. And like I say, you can see where it's white. I could have literally got tons and tons of this when they working on that road. But I got probably 2,000 pounds or more and brought it home and ended up about 500 pounds. I said, man, it's not worth getting my friend to get it for me. He was getting it for me and, and uh, over Rex more. And I told him, I said, Rex, I wouldn't fool with it no more. And I still wouldn't today. But when you do find a piece that's, uh, that you get something solid out of, all right, that's where one of the layers went through right there. But when you do get something, you get something solid out of it. It sure is pretty material. So I'm going to stop on that one and put it down there. And uh, look how thin this is. It's going to be hard to do something that's paper thin here. And it's twisted like a prop on an airplane, a propeller. So it's and it stick on the end and real thin in the middle. So I'm gonna have to just take little bitty pieces off and kind of keep it airborne like this so it won't break it in the middle. Ooh, that cortex on this side, that was outer edge. I'm gonna hit that a little harder to get it off. I want it to be real careful. Okay, this one to me would be ready because people say, well, how can you work a, an edge that's a razor edge? And that's exactly what is right there is a razor edge. So I'm going to grind it real good and uh, I'm going to start showing you how to work it. I'm going to bring it in this way. And the further I go towards the middle, and I'm chipping straight down on it like this. And the further I go towards the middle, the thicker it's getting, the more material I got to bite into. So you see a lot of questions asked in the flint knifing community. How, how thin or how thin of a slab could be percussion plate? Uh, I don't know. That's a tough question. I like them real thin. I'm going to try to make something super thin out of it. It's like the... Uh, like the slab guys do when they get pressure plate. I have nothing against the slab guys or the flake overgrinding guys. Just up my cup of tea, and I do it constantly. 
I got some slabs right here I'm fixing to work and make knife blades out of because of pretty knife blades have got the flakes running all the way across and meeting and not all the way across the meeting and build what sells. And so to make money, I got to do it. But this is what I enjoy doing is, is a challenge like this. And it might be a challenge to you, and I'm not saying it's not. Some things, are, like playing uh, golf, some people, I'm fixing to sneeze, y'all look, excuse me. <coughs> some people might pick it up so easy. Within a year or two, they're playing a great game. And other people might play 10 years, and they're still not good at it. Or shooting pool, or, or shooting a gun, shooting play pigeons, anything like that. But flake over grinding and slab work is just easy to me. It's like it's like it's not a challenge enough for me. And if you want to do flake over grinding like Jim did and uh, some of the other guys, my mind's going blank right now. I'm gonna call their names out, Mike, and a few more. But anyway, they sure enough are skilled at it. And they practice hard because grinding it one of the key things of being success. And they take them a long time learning how to grind it and get that perfect bevel and medium ridge in it and things like that. But then again, not my cup of tea. That's why they make chocolate and vanilla and strawberry and peach and blonde-headed women and brown-headed women and Blue eyes and black eyes and green eyes and purple hull peas and just plain old peas. All right, that's a good one. I got it ready. Put it in the pile. I spent a little longer time on that one than I normally do because I had to be careful because it was so thin. I had to thin the base real careful. Couldn't just go in there like this hitting on it. And when I pull these pieces out of the kill like this, I had to be, first thing I do is try to go around the edge, look for cracks and bad spots. And this is a rotten area in here, it's what I call it, it was like a piece of rotten wood. None of this is any good, this is only part good, so I'm gonna put this one in my semi-bucket. And I'll work on it later on, because it's gonna take a lot of Gang time. <laughs> a lot of time to get it ready. Now here's one that's just long and narrow. Now here's a good example. I know y'all get something like this, got a ridge running down the back of it, and that's the cortex part right there on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run one down the ridge, but I'm gonna lose this length anyway, because all of this is the cortex, the grainy side through here. So the width of my finger, I'm gonna lose all of that. So I know right away I'm only gonna have like a two inch piece. So I'm just gonna chip across here on an angle like this and it curves that down. And I talk about that awful lot. I can chip on an angle and uh, curve it down. Now I got a platform following that rig. Look how easy that plate follows the rig. So then I come up here, I've done the same thing. Got another one going that way. Well, it wasn't another one, it was, always, it was already there. And that's another platform. Okay, that ridge is gone. It's offset over here a little bit, but this is so thin here. This is actually thinner than that other piece. So I got to thicken this up and uh, I'm gonna take some off the head here, the base part where I would put my knots or whatever. I'm gonna thin it first. I'm gonna let it taste as strong as it can be to help, help support all the shock going through here. The thicker it is, the more shock it can absorb. I'm using a little bit of copper bopper. 
There's not putting much shock in it. Now I'm working on this razor head. And I'm just hitting straight out on it. I'm just moving it that way. I'm not trying to hit very far in it, just straight out. I'm gonna turn it over this way. No grinding or nothing, just a little razor head. Just hitting straight out on it. Now it's starting to get thicker because I'm pulling it this way where it's thicker. And I'm gonna keep on hitting on it. I'm gonna get it just a tad thicker. Okay, it's thick enough now to run one over to this. That one went right into it. And that one went right into it. Now I'm gonna come back this way. That come across there. And I think I'm gonna start on the point and start working this bad side off. It's got most of the cortex on it. And see how many times I'm having to hit on it right here to break through that chalk here. And I'm just barely hitting on the edge. Cause I won't then I won't put a lot of shock in it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle down this way. And I'm gonna grind this so I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. By angling down this way, I made me a little point right there. And I can turn this billet this way and get in there and look what it, the mass it took off of there. So I'm gonna come back and lose some more point. It's still gonna be shorter before I get finished with it. And I need this right here to uh, run some off. So I'm gonna try to follow this ridge, which I did, that's the piece. And it's starting to shape up. Now we'll get this side. Got a big old hinge right there around the corner. It was in it before I started hitting on it. Big old crack. Not a, not a crack, but a, where you hit it, it didn't go far when it, before I heat treated it. It was already there before it was heat treated and it's gone. So, I'm gonna come through here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to run a flute down the middle and I'm not making a clover side of it or nothing like that. I'm just trying to thin the base and the best way to do it, you'll lose some width. Length, I mean, it's come down the middle like here. Run a flute down it, just like this and it's off and the base is still. That one's ready to go. Here's one that uh, blew up. It was a high grade of, of buffalo in there and I overlooked it. I tried to grade it because buffalo takes different grades, take different temperatures, but sometimes you overlook a piece. I don't know if I'm gonna get anything out of here or not, cause it just fractured all the pieces. But we're gonna we're gonna work down on and see what's gonna happen. You know, I might get something out of it. Yeah, that's that's slick up in there. This is where it blew up. I'm gonna get rid of this base out here where all the fractures are at. I tell you what, when a rock blows up, if you can get the little pieces, you make little air force out of it, that's some of the prettiest, slickest stuff you ever laid eyes on sometimes. I'm gonna hit pretty hard. There we go, that's what I was trying to do, run a good one down there. And I'm gonna hit hard right here on this side. That make me a platform to hit on. I'm gonna try to come right through here. That one come off there. Now I'm gonna come over here and try to come this way. I'm gonna hit on that angle I was talking about. I'm gonna turn it over. Yeah. I'll go back to this little one. You see how it set my platform up? I hit that way and turn it over. I'm gonna hit this way. Cause I'm wanting to run it right up through there and it did. I'm gonna come this way. 
and I'm hit down like that. Do the same thing. Hit on this side. Come back. A lot of cortex right there. And that is, I'm hitting on chalk. It finally broke. This piece is just not that big. It's going to make a pretty airport. I'm going to put it in my maybe box because it's getting real big. I'll try to work on it later on. Here's a piece of uh, what I call bullseye or painted buffalo. And I don't get much out of it because look at here. All of this is here and it runs all the way right through there. So I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to start chipping way up on it. Look at how I'm hitting up on it because it's real thin. I'm trying to break it down until I get to where the, from past that old limestone, that cortex. All right, now we'll try to run one down the middle. A good heavy flute to try to stay in this base. A lot of little, because that cortex has got a lot of little dimples all in it, like a golf ball. But don't you look at this. It's dipped down in here. It's over here. So if I can get the right billet and I can hit hard enough, I might can run it somewhere halfway. Went halfway. There we go. Now I'm going to come back on this end and try to do the same thing. <clears throat> so I'm finding what I think is the right size to hit it with. Should have went with one probably a size bigger because it didn't run as far as this one did. But still, it's getting good results. Okay. Go back to the small one. And I'm studying this deal. I'm going to hit right here on the end. There's a little isolated platform right here, sort of like a, a little thorn off a rose bush or something that's just sticking out there. Like a sore toe, we hit straight down on it and ran across there. I didn't hit straight in on it because it wasn't solid, it was chalky on the outer edge. So I was able to hit down here. And the further I hit up by hitting straight down, the more solid it is and I can run along the plate. And I'll try to explain to you what I mean by that right here. Okay, this is a chalky edge. If I hit straight into that edge, just the chalk is not going to do much. And I got to try to jump this hinge right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and try to hit straight down where the good stuff is. I'm trying to miss that chalk. I'm getting up above it, and I'm going to hit this way, like that. And look how it took that out. Took that chalky hinge out, just like that. So I'm going to... Do the rest of it on this side this way. So it's like a, a cake that's layer, a real thin layer. You have a chocolate and, and then another color, maybe all chocolate with icing in between. So again, I'm going to hit way up here and straight down. And I about got all that off of that side. So I'm gonna come over here and try to make a real big, nice plate come across, right across through here. If I can hit it, good one come right across there. Come back and work this this side.
I'm just chipping down, just barely shaving the edge, pulling it up. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, I'll stop and show you what, what went wrong. When I hit right here, I didn't hit high enough up and I caught it chalky here and it just hinged all in there in that other chalky part. Now right here I don't have to do that because there's no chalky here. And I'm not grinding this. If you'll notice, I'm just trying to skim the edge. Now I'll grind it. I got my platform set up. I'm going to try to come all the way across there. And this is what I try to do. I want to make me a real good platform. Let me put it back together. Okay. Don't you look how far this flake run. Went from there to there. Took out almost all that orange looking dirt stuff. Now, if I can hit above it right through here, really didn't need to grind. We're gonna hit up on top of it. I got it out. Okay, that a pressure flake. That one's ready. The reason I like doing this for y'all is because you run into all kind of major problems. This piece blew up and it went right around through here and it left us like a tooth coming up on a on a turtle or something, or an alligator, beak on a bird. So I'm gonna knock that off because I know it's not gonna be be part of the preform. I'm I'm taking away everything that don't look like a point. Like somebody said, hey you carve that dog out they said, well I'll cut it if they way it don't look like a dog. So in my imagination I'm gonna have about a maybe three inch point here if I'm lucky. I'm gonna try to get this chalk off by hitting up above. Did you see how high I hit it was solid there? Chalk on the edge, hit where the edge was, nothing would have happened. And I hit almost straight down. And because of so much commentary, it, it, it went a long way. If it hadn't been surrounded, it wouldn't went far at all. This is going to be a pretty good challenge because of all this chalk on it. But I'm slowly, slowly, slowly whittling the way at it. And I'm trying to get the most of it off on the ends first and thin these ends because I'm having to hit up above it so high up, putting a lot of shock in that rock. And that's why I'm hitting straight down and out this way because it's making my shot kind of go that way. That's doing nothing because I'm hitting on nothing but chalk. I kept thinking it might break off. So I come over here where there's no chalk and I'm gonna try to come this way. I can't come this way. You see all that jumps up in the air just way up so I'm gonna come this way. And I got a little sharp edge right here I got to remove because if I hit it, it's going to crush. So I'm going to come, gonna come like right across there and try to knock it out. And this is what happened. So now I got some solid stuff up here and hit on and get the rest of it out of here. I'm going to get rid of that one. It's, it's heavier than I like to hit with. And uh, I don't know. I like short handles. I've got to cut the handles off of those others. I just got them too long. I was learning how to make them and uh, I didn't realize I didn't like the long handles on them. I like them about this late. Come this way. That 
took a lot of that high, high spot out by coming that way. Now I'm come this way, off the side over here. Trying to save as much length on this. I could have made a flute inflate to come straight down by making them go across like this. Look how good that worked. Now I'm come back up here. Take just a little off, I'm not sanding. Now I'll sand because I just want to move a little bit. There's some more of that old crazy, crazy rotten tooth. Got to get that old bad cavity out of there. There we go. Now, all I got to do on this one, it'd be ready to go, is get these ridges and low places out. And some people want me to leave them in there as long as there's not any bad hinges, because that way they're learning to get that stuff out. So I try to make them different shapes and designs for people that's more advanced. And I'll have nappers tell them, I don't need any more of that thin. I get pretty good pressure flaking. Maybe some that's a little more thicker. And, uh, some little problems in it. Give me a challenge. And that's the way you learn. It's all low here, high here. Took that off, but that's that's what I like to sell. It looks like that right there. Now over here, I gotta get this one to look like that. So what I got right here, is I have a little isolated platform. And hit on. Just going around straightening the edges up. Not trying to move any particular mass or anything like that. And there we go. Another one in the bucket. All right, we're going to do a couple more and I'm going to stop and do a video on making something real thin. So I said I can go with it and find some material that'll work on that. Now we're gonna do this one and we're gonna stop. Doing this one because it's so thin all the way around except right up here. And all I could say, and I might be wrong, if I could make this slow motion where I could study it and analyze it and magnify it and blow it up real good in slow motion like when a bullet's going through a glass of water and see all the little beads of water coming out. I might not be doing what I think I'm doing, but this is what it seems to be like I'm doing. Just barely trying to get that edge to break, but it wouldn't. I wasn't hitting it hard enough to cause any problem, I just give it the edge. I said this is what I think I'm doing, but I'm not sure. When it's a razor edge like this, I try to make it a little thicker. And then I try to hit right in the middle of it, not even blow the center line, and uh, to get some flakes to run on it. And you said, well, that didn't work. Yeah, it did too. Look how far it went, but it's real chalky though. When it got there, it hit that clay or that cortex on this thing. So it couldn't run any further than that. If it had been a piece of Georgetown that was clean, or if this was clean and didn't have any cortex on it, you could see real well what happened. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And try to hit straight into it. See, I might be going down, but it looks like I'm hitting straight into it. Now look at that what happened. And that was razor thin. So I'm gonna dull it here, it's razor thin here. Now, when I hit it, it wasn't razor thin because I dulled it. I made it a little thicker, but look how thin it is. Hit straight in, and there it went. Straight in. See, I'm not even grinding here, and I'm hitting straight in. Trying to get the chalk off this point. I don't want to hit, grind it and have a real thick base on it. 
This is what I'm finding out for myself after years and years and years. If you got a little needle type point like I got down here and you grind it, the thicker you make it, the harder you gotta hit it. And you don't want to hit it hard because you don't want to run it even, a, sometimes not even a sixteenth of an inch. Just take a little ding out of it. Now, I couldn't run no plate two inches across or an inch across doing that. But it's, I think it's time to grind and time to knot. And here's time to knot right here. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Still a lot of cortex. You can see that red stuff right there. It's a very sharp edge. Look at that. So I'm going to come here and get straight, straight into it, but I'm not. I'm hitting and rolling down like I'm hitting like this. Trying to thicken that edge just a little bit. And I'm going to be able to get it too thick because it's so thin. That's good enough. Didn't rub it hard. I'm going to leave it there. That plate went right there. Watch this. That plate went right there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to start a new video on how thin we can go.